So we're in Warsaw, Trelawney at this time, Trelawney, uh, Warsaw Baptist Church, of course the motorcade is just right above this road here, and uh, of course persons are making their way up to where the excitement is, and they will be joining us here on this premises in just a little while, as a matter of fact we might just take you closer to where the action is so do stay tuned do stand by and we'll keep you covered for the rest of this event so as you can hear we have quite a few bikers who are representing Miss Polly's send-off so we can hear them from a distance away. And here they come, the marching band, led by some bikers. Of course, people are running from all corners to join in with the excitement. Of course, if you haven't yet seen last night's celebration in the form of it, the Nine Night, just right up the road, you can of course check the videos on this channel because we were here, we were live just last night. And that's where the action is. Of course, this service is being done by the Robinson Funeral Home in Warsaw, Trelawney.
Good day, everyone. Good afternoon, church. His voice makes a difference. His voice makes a difference when he speaks. Is the only voice, is the only voice I hear. Please stand, church. And I follow one day. Uh, his voice makes a difference. His voice. When he speaks, when he speaks. He's the only voice. He's the only voice I hear that makes a difference. And I follow, and I follow. No one day. Ah. One last time, his voice, his voice. When he speaks, is the only voice. The Lord redeems his servants. No one will be condemned who takes refuge in him. God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He or she who believes in me will live even though he or she dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Then, church, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And the people of God, we say. Amen. And the people of God, we shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We continue into worship. And our moderator will come and lead us in the singing of our hymn of praise. When peace like a river. Thank you very much, Pastor. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Let us sing on this hymn lustily to unto the Lord, when peace like a river. When peace like a river attended my way when sorrows like sea fill us roll whatever my Lord thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is 
offering this afternoon. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And now we'll invite Reverend Lord to come and just open in prayer for us. Please just bow our heads and close our eyes as we go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness. O oh God, our Father, Lord God, you change not, nor your compassion, they fail not. And Lord, as you have been from eternity past, you, God, will forever be, because God, you change not. And so, God, today we come before you by faith in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord God, we come here this day to be comforted. We come here today, dear Lord, to celebrate a life. And we come, Lord, to give our support to, the, to a grieving family and community. Lord God, we come and we ask you, Lord, that you, are, you will honor yourself and your word. And Lord, you will help us to feel your presence around us today. It is your word, O oh God, who says that where two or three are gathered in your name, God, there you will be made to bless. And so, Father God, we commit this service into your hand. We thank you, God, for traveling mercies. For all those who have traveled, God, from near and far. We thank you, dear God, that we are here safely. And so, God, I ask you, God, in a very special way, that you will lead and you will direct this service. We pray and we ask you, God, that, Lord, those who will come today, Lord, you will use them to bless and encourage our hearts. And we pray and we ask you, God, in a very special way, that, God, you will be glorified. You will be edified. And, God, at the end of the day, Lord, we can be encouraged and we will have hope. We commit the moderator into your hand and we ask, God, that you will lead him by your spirit. We commit Reverend Camille into your hand as well. We pray and we ask you as he delivered your word today. We pray and we ask you, Lord, that it will fall on good ground. And we pray and we ask you, God, in a very special way, dear Lord, that somebody, Lord, who is under the sound of his voice today, who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, will come to that knowledge, will come to that place where he and she will give their life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, God, we ask you that you wrap your hand around the family at this time and you will bear them up. Because God, only you alone know and understand what they are going through. You are a man of sorrow and you are acquainted with grief. And so we thank you, God, that you are a burden bearer. We thank you, God, that you are a bridge over every troubled water. And so we commit everything into your hands. We thank you, God, for listening. And we thank you, God, for what you will do. As we ask it, Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. The power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Could you just remain standing as we also recite the Lord's. Um, the prayer, the Lord's my shepherd. Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green paths. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. 
He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup went over. Only goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. That's a great God we serve. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we know we're gathered here this afternoon to celebrate the life and to give thanks for none other than uh, our dear friend, sister, and relative, uh, Marva Wilmoth, otherwise known as Polly, within the community by one and all. And so we really want to extend condolences from the, on behalf of the church and thank the church for accommodating and, you know, celebrating in this uh, service. And for all the members who are here, just to share and to support the family. It is in times like these that they need our comfort, need our prayers, and whatever way we can just extend a word of comfort. And so we just ask you, even after this, to continue to share with the family in this moment. We do ask as we move into the program that we observe some basic protocols. It would be good if you don't have your phones on, if they're on, if you could put them on silence so it's not disruptive to the service. And for persons who will be participating in the service um, in terms of tribute, please use the microphone that is here. And as I call you out in the program, be prepared um, to so do. I know there are many persons here who are new, traveling from far, all over the country. And so um, the bathroom facilities would be to my left, your right, through that door. And then you go left and it's to the, on the outside there. So if you do need to use the restroom. Let us ensure that we worship God. Praise God. Let us worship God. Isn't he deserving of praise? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so we'll move in the order of the service and there'll be a change in terms of the scripture reading. And I'll indicate where that comes in for Yakisha Carter who'll be reading. You'll be reading near to the second lesson. But the rest of the program will flow accordingly as I call. And so I'm going to invite uh, Nikisha Henry to come and to sing for us a musical selection. Put your hands together for Nikisha as she comes. Is Nakisha? All right, if Nakisha is not here, we'll move smoothly through the program. I'm going to invite Dean Smith to come, and Dean is uh, Polly's cousin. Dean, put your hands together for Dean. She's present and ready. Praise God. Good afternoon, church. I'm here for the play Polly Marva. She is my sister. She is my cousin. She's everything to me. Word cannot tell. Well, I'm going to recite a poem for Polly. An extract from the creation by James well done, Johnson. And God stepped out and spaced, and he looked around and said, I'm lonely, and make me a world. And as far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnight, down in a swiper's swamp. Then God smiled, and the light broke, and the darkness stood over on one side, and the light stood shining on the other. And God said, that's good. Hop from the bed of the river, God scooped the clay, and by the bank of the river, he kneeled down, 
and there is a great God Almighty who lit the star and fixed it in the sky, who flung the star to the most dark corner of the night. This great God, like a man in bed over his baby, kneeled down in the dust, tiding over a lump of clay, till he shaked his own image, and to it he blew the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Amen. Praise God. Thank you very much, Sister Dean. You know, and man became a living soul, and it is the soul of man that is most important. You know, we live in this life, and there's some point in time that we will leave. And what is most important is that we're prepared. Some glad morning, when my life is in, I'll fly away. Naxian, get ready, please. To a... Could you stand? Oh, fly away. Praise God, you may be seated. That's the preparation for us. Noxian, if you could come with your tribute at this time. Put your hands together for Noxian. She's small and brave. Small and brave, indeed, indeed. And praise God. Good afternoon, everyone. I am going to say a poem for my cousin, Marva Wilmot, known as Polly. Until we meet again, my second cousin, those special moments of you will always bring a smile. If only I could have you back for just a little while, then we could sit and talk again just like we used to do. You always meant so very much and always will do. The fact that you're no longer here will always cause me pain, but you are forever in my heart until we meet again. May your soul rest in peace. Thank you and may God thank you. Clap her again, please. Clap her again. Clap her again. And that is so sweet. I'm going to ask Nikisha just to, Nikisha Henry to prepare to come if you're here now. Nikisha Henry. You know, uh, this morning, very early, I saw uh, a young little boy just crying. A young boy crying. And Anapali, Anapali son. But what I hear and what I know is that Polly looks like she is in charge of the entire community. Is that so? Yes. Oh, man. Is that so? Yes. yes, man. So I could understand the impact on the lives. Everybody, almost as if there is no gate, no entrance, just come on in. And just in charge of everybody. And that's a life that makes impact. Isn't that good? 
I think we should just clap her. She's ahead of us. But just look at the impact of what she has left on for others. They have. Praise God. And you know, I'm going to ask the media team just to get ready to play a tribute. Even persons who are overseas, they can't come. But they send their tributes flowing from overseas. And we're just going to play one snippet. You know, if we were to talk, everybody give up a chance. It will be going on and on. But we'll just give a little blips of what's happening. You know, while the media team put together, Marsha Davis, who is not here, said, Polly has been my friend for as long as I can remember. We grew up together, and I have loved her as a big sister from then and even in death. I look forward, look forward coming to Warsaw and knowing that we will be spending time together chatting. Sometimes you wonder if chat, Polly could chat, but Polly could well chat with who she chatted with. No, say go? No, mommy, not tell her. Laughing. Polly chat and laugh with who she laugh and chat with. No, so? Right? And me and waiting on her and listen to this and you'll hear it and you all know it more than I do. Waiting on her pot. Somebody told me a while ago that they were waiting on the kettle. Waiting on her pot to cook. I have lost a good friend, a sister and a mentor. She will always and forever be my sister from another mother. That's Polly for many persons. We now have a tribute that will come from the Vanessa Plummer. And this will be played on the screen. Could you pay attention to the screen, please? In life, I loved you dearly. In death, I do the same. It broke my heart to lose you. You did not go alone. For a part of me went with you. On the day God called you home. You left me beautiful memories. Your love is still my guide. And though we cannot see you, you're always at my side. Tuffy was the name you gave to me. I can remember all the times you would fry fish. At the end of frying, you would wrap my fish in napkins and bring them to me. You would say, Tuffy, come take them from me. I would say, Thanks, Yan Tuffy. You would say, You're lucky. Even though when I'm eating the fish, tears would run down my face, not because I was sad, but because it was really peppery but nice at the same time. But I always have to say, Boy, Tuffy, pepper fish, but it's nice. Not to mention when you cooked cow skin soup with peanuts. But I will sit on a sink pan when the pot I got on cook for your carry man come give me. I don't mean to sound craving, but I also love her curry chicken. I remember when I was a bit smaller, you would take me everywhere you went, whether it was St. Elizabeth or to Blind Lane to visit your chair. I had the pleasure to grow up around you and make a lot of memories. You were like a mother figure to me. When my mom and dad went somewhere, you would always check on me to make sure I was okay. When it started to get dark, you would come for me and take me with you to your house. I would sleep over there until the next day or even until my mom gets back. I can never forget the days I came over to play with Shaki. You would not allow me to go back home without taking a bath. You always found clothes for me to put on even if, even if it was one of your blouses. There was never a dull moment around you. As I matured into the young lady I am today, I still maintain that level of relationship with her. I never tried to disrespect her in any way because I loved her like my own mother. I can remember the last time I visited her. This was Mother's Day, and I even remember the last words I said to her. These words were, Tough in me are going on. When I got the news about your passing was Monday night. I was on a meeting with my classmates studying for the start of final examinations on Tuesday morning. I had to leave the meeting because I broke down. Luckily, I had my classmates who flooded me with words of comfort. Three years to go, but I already had your name written down for my graduation and was waiting to tell you to buy your dress from now, but God had other plans. Love is stronger than death, even though it can't stop it from happening. But no matter how hard death tries, it can't separate people from love. It can't take our memories away either. In the end, life is stronger than death. Sleep with the angels. I 
And Vanessa say, mm-hmm, the food. I hear the food over and over. And, you know, Polly is gone. But the memories live on. And we're here at the memorial. And this can be a starting point wherever we are in our lives. No matter how old we are, we can always say, what is the impact we can have on somebody's life as we prepare for our eternity? It is coming. But what we can prepare? Who is going to do the cowskin and chunky peanut soup for somebody to enjoy and to share chats? You know, who will take that on and impact somebody's lives to move on and to be better and even to encourage them into glory, which is where it's finally at. We'll now have the remembrance and immediately after the remembrance, we'll have the offertory hymn. I'm going to invite the ushers to prepare as we invite Nadine Robinson to come and share the remembrance. Could you put your hands together for Nadine? No, sir, I couldn't know I hear the remembrance. All right, thank you. Nadine, they really want to hear the remembrance, all right? Thank you. Praise the Lord. God is indeed a good God. In spite of the situation and the circumstance that we're under today, God is indeed a good God, and we still have something to give God thanks for. And I would like to say to somebody today, just try it in everything, just try Jesus. Put Jesus first in everything. No matter what you're going through, just make Jesus your number one priority. Remembrance of the late Marble Wilmot, known as Pali, Pal Pal. For Persian, it's Tuxi. Pali was loved by her family with a passion, especially her mother, Cher Cher. Pali loved her mother and her father with a passion. I'm telling you, with a passion, with a passion. When her father was sick, Polly, um, her mother used to work at the station. Polly would um, go, home, go home every morning after her mother gone to work to take care of her father. She would put Junior over her shoulder and said, and come to Lane. When she come to Lane, Nadine, me go over yard, you know, you come in, and she go down the end, me go over yard, you know, later, she now pass and she no call to me, and she no call to Dean. Because we were, we were like sisters. We live, we grew up, we live, we grew up. For all our days, we grew up like sisters because Polly and my mother was two was best friends. And we grew up like sisters. And Polly, Polly just loved everybody. Polly loved everybody. Polly loved children. Polly have our shop and the children going to basic school, which is this basic school over here. Polly would um, give them, they not leave her, she not give them something. You can't let your picnic at Polly Yard and worry yourself. Because guess what? Polly not send them home hungry. And Polly not send them home dirty. She had to make sure say, them are right and she had to take best care of them. That was Polly. And Polly was a person like this. Polly was a virtuous woman. Polly would use her hand to, to make fashion. Polly would take simple things and make dinner for her family. And when it comes to Polly, there was um, Polly could cook the best pork. When I tell you the best pork, the best pork, and she does not eat pork. She could not eat it because if she eat it, remember she go and swell up and she could cook the best pork without tasting it. And Polly would love to go to Mandeville to look for her family member, Susie. And when she go there and she, um, she would come back and she would talk about Maya and she would talk about Everett and she would talk about how she go around Auntie Yuna and tell me how she spend her time with Auntie Yuna. And it's like Polly was the person like this. She looked out for people. She looked out for her family. She was very jovial. She was very loving. That's what I admire about her. And she was a no-nonsense person. In, in spite of everything, yeah, she might have something now, but remember, you can't put it back together. That was Polly. And Polly, and I remember one time, um, something day, um, me and Polly, have Kim, I have Kay, which was my first daughter, Polly, of Kemar. And they were in grade one. We would walk up to the school every day with lunch for both Kemar and, and Kay and, and Leary. And if I prepare lunch today, I'll probably prepare it tomorrow. I would go there with the lunch for them. And we'd make sure that they are okay. Every day we go until they were in grade two. That was Polly. And the joke about it is like, I have, I have um, Kimani. And Kimani was older than Shaki. Kimani was coming to the basic school here. I live in Mount Happy. And whenever Kimani come from school, he would stay with Polly. But remember, 
Pali, Kimani go home every evening with a cock in his pocket. And Kimani didn't suck breast longer than two, mo two months old. And every evening, Pali have to full Kimani cock of milk for Kimani to drink. And when Pali said, Nadine Kimani, still I drink breast milk, you know, me said, no. He said, yes, every evening he come with him cock. Hi, tomorrow evening I'll come. And you see if you don't see him with him cock or breast milk. You could always rely upon Polly with your children. You could always. And life took a turn for Polly. When Polly, um, she feel her breast wasn't feeling well. She went to the doctor. At the time, Junior was um, a couple years old. She went to the doctor. The doctor said um, the, bre the, um, the breast wasn't serious. It was like um, the baby belch on the breast. And she said, I didn't baby belch on the breast. I said, the doctor said, son of me. You understand? And it's like she was there and it, she, wasn't, she, she didn't take it for nothing. And she got pregnant with Tavia in 2011. And five months, she got to clinic at five months pregnant. And when she got to clinic, a nurse examined her and said, this breast does not look right, man. And the nurse sent her off to Falmouth and they started to do a routine check on her breast and stuff like that. And um, check her up and it's like, they, um, during the pregnancy, they punch the breast, they take out a lump. Then test the lump, um, they said the lump was cancerous. When the time come for her to have the child, they, 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 the month for her to have the child, they asked her to come into the hospital and they admit her. Even Gwen, Gwen was the person who followed her down there um, the day when she was supposed to have the baby. When she got in, it's like um, the baby, she, um, her heart rate was, was dropping, the baby heart rate was dropping, and the doctor um, said um, they have to cut her and take the child. And they cut her and take the child. And after they cut her and take the child, and they, they plan to cut, take off the breast. She comes, she said, I have baby, you know. I said, yes, what kind of baby? She said, a girl baby. But you have to take the baby, you know. I said, what are you going to do with one four-day-old baby? He said, you have to take the baby. Because Perjan wants to visit the nurse. I don't want him at the nursery. I said, Pani, I can't manage the baby. You have to take the baby. So I said, what are you going to do with him? Anything you want to do with him, you do with him as long as you make sure he's still alive when I come home. We <laughs> <laughs> go for the four-day-old four baby. Me and Perjan go down there and we go down there. And the doctor released the baby and we come home with the baby. And it's like um, she, she was in the hospital, then take off the breast, and she spent a little time and me have the baby up and down with the baby. When the baby figure six weeks clinic, when bring him, when he figure up clinic, clinic after me, bring him to clinic, and so till she can manage to go around with our baby and stuff. And Polly was a very strong person. When I tell her, she's a very strong person, a very strong person. And Polly had been living 11 years, 11 years without being up and she, she get her checkup. But not to say to get treatment or anything. She was after she got to her first her first semester chemo. She was living and she live and she live. And so till last year, life took a turn on her. Where she fell, and after she fell, she um she started to go up and down now and do some tests. And Seely would follow her because it's like she loves Seely. When we tell us I love Seely, she loves Seely. She um she Seely would always have to follow her. And when she go and she start to do the tests, them now upon the breast, she found that um it was she was getting. You know she was getting down and they start to give her some treatment and something and she started to up and down. And there now she um she um, since the year, since the um since Ma, I think it was I think February, she kinda getting after the chemo, she kinda getting a little bit down. And Shaki, her daughter, has done a great job with the help of her mother. When I tell you an excellent job, it was an excellent job for a young girl. I don't know if I could have managed it on my own the way how oh, Shaki has managed it. She has stood up like a big woman to her mother. And I tell her every day, I'm not going to wait until she passes off. I tell her every day that we talk here today, there's a crown in heaven for her. All she has to do is make her pathway right with God. For her to receive her true blessing from God. Because listen to me, that girl, trust me, she has done it and she has done it and she has done it all. And no matter what the circumstances, when you see she cry, just be around with her. Because you don't know what she's going through. You understand me? And me tell you, trust me. And because of the goodness of what Polly has done, people, has, people um, rally around her. People love her. You understand me? And people look out for her. You understand? So me tell her something. Just, just keep the children in their prayers and encourage them. And me tell the children today, see God first and all his righteousness, and all the things will be added unto you. Praise God. Thank you very much. That's quite a remembrance, and if you forget 
everything, there's one thing I'll make sure you don't forget is that Polly was a strong woman. And in being a strong woman, we have now recognized that she has really birthed some strong children. And I know, you know, Kemar, Shaki, Junian, Tav, Tav, Tavia, really keep praying for them, keep strengthening them in terms of what their mother has put into them. And we know that by God's grace, they will do well. And um, we know Persian is there. Oh, no, no, so Persian strong. But you know, Sepal is stronger. <laughs> you know, just um, strengthen the family in everything as we support them nonstop. Praise God. All right. So I'm going to ask you to, which one is better? We're going to do the offertory hymn. Let's be seated while the ushers come around as we sing on the offertory hymn. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. That's the one? Yes, that's the one. Sing of his mercy and his grace. Praise God. Amen. Just one second. All right. Now I just invite one of the ushers to come and pray. Bless the offering. So we'll just bless the offering. Could you stand for the blessing of the offering? Bless the Lord. Eternal great God, everlasting Father and friend, here we are in the house of worship once more. We come to give you glory, we come to give you honor, and we come to give you praise. Mighty God of Daniel, we even come to give you a monetary offering. And as your people stretch forth your hands, Father God, I pray, divine God, that you will bless every pocket, you will bless every purse, those who have to give, you bless them. Those who do not have to give, I pray, divine God, that you share the blessing among them. And I pray, divine God, that even though they do not have the monetary gifts, but they will give their lives and their soul as a living sacrifice unto you. Divine God, I pray that as the, as the offering is being gathered, that the users of this these gifts, God Almighty, will use them to enhance your kingdom here on earth, and it will bring glory and honor. We look to you and tell you thanks for hearing and answering our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay, just, uh, you all want to change position. I think you could just um, be seated and sing, and we'll stand somewhere near the end of it, all right? Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing the dream. While we wander, I speak of his beauty. Rejoicing when we all we will sing and shout the victory. I think we need to do it once more when we all what a day of rejoicing we all. What profit that he that worketh in that wherein he labored? I have seen the travail which God had given to the Son of Man to be exercised in it. He had made everything beautiful in his time, also he had set the world of their hearts, so that no man can find out the word that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice, and to do good in his life. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. 
It is the gift of God. Your enthusiasm, reading of God. Thanks be to God. Invited to remain standing for the second reading, and the second reading will come to us from Marifa Hansen, Polly's sister-in-law, and she reads the second reading from John. Ego, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way. The truth and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you, had lo you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Verse 8. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is sufficient for us. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you very much, both readers, for leading us in the reading of God's holy word. You know, we enter a very promising part of the service where we'll hear the word of God. And with us this afternoon is our host pastor. Reverend Franz Camille, who will lead us in the homily. And so we just want to pray for him that the Lord will use him to speak to our hearts. Those within the hearing of our voice can hear. There's only one person, the one body. Hear that, and you know, we say it's a body, the soul is no longer there, it's Polly. But all of us can hear. And so we trust that we will turn our hearts. To the word as it is ministered to us but before he comes there is a sister who is journeying from Perjan, Howie, hometown all the way in St. Elizabeth from the fire baptized holiness church of God please make welcome Patsy McKinley Brown to come and minister in song Praise God.
Good afternoon, church. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. Let me hear you shout hallelujah. Let me hear you shout praise the Lord. We shall have a new name in that land. In that land that's the Shall have a new name in that land. We shall have a new name in that land. New name, new name in that sunny land. New name. Shall have a new name in that land. That sunny, sunny land. We shall have a new name in that land. New name, new name. In that sunny land. New name. In that sunny land. We shall have a new name in that land. We shall have a new name. In that sunny land, no name. No name, no name. In that sunny land, oh, we shall have a no name in that land. In that have a no name in that land. In that sunny land. Please, praise God. Please be seated. Lord God, I'm waiting on the musician to catch up. All oh, now they don't catch up. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's not my fault. <laughs> we greet all the pastors in the congregation. And uh, we have overheard the leader tell us that it's a homily. Therefore, the leader does not expect us to be on the pulpit more than five minutes. That's the first time you are at your own home and they're giving you orders. <laughs> but I'll take that one. Let me read one verse for you as we together... A look at what the Lord has in store for us. I'll read a scripture recorded in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I'll read verse 1. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. The word of the Lord. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for this wonderful day. You have blessed all of us. And here we come right now, Lord, to give you. We pray in Jesus' name and the church of God, we say. Amen. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Friends, one of the dangers when you read the Bible and you meet with familiar verses that there are some real dangers that you face. The more familiar the verse is the most dangerous when though you receive the verse and you think that the verse will protect you but only God can protect you. Amen. Many of us we are using that verse as a shield to protect your children and you say no weapon from against me and you say it with such confidence but you do not have any confidence in God. Amen. So therefore the familiarity of the verse may well give you the impression that you get it but you do not get it yet there is another verse that we hear people say a lot i shall never be the tail but the head but guess what you are still the tail Amen. Amen. the truth of that is that familiarity with the verse may give you some misunderstanding 
Therefore, if you misunderstand what the scripture is saying, you will also miss the spiritual lesson that God has in store for you. Therefore, I believe that people, when they read that verse in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, that there is a time for everything under heaven, we tend to miss what the writer is saying. Because some of us use that verse as a revenge. To tell people that there is a time under heaven for everything. Because you have done something to me last year. I am going to do it to you today. Because under heaven there is a time for everything. Therefore we use that verse as a revenge to make people pay for what they have done. Of course there is a time under heaven for everything. But not for you to make people pay for anything they have done. Some people use that verse as a way to show off. When they say that there is a time for everything under heaven, they are telling you that yesterday me did look like a pauper, but today me look like a rich man. Indeed, there is a time under heaven for everything to show off. And for some people who are more spiritual like you, you may use that verse as a way to tell people that watch it, God is watching you. Therefore, is a way of punishing people. Punishment. To tell them that there is under heaven a time for everything. You are telling them that God is in control. And enjoy it now because later on you may not enjoy it. Therefore, you hear the Jamaicans say, Today, Fimi. That's the same thing that we want people to understand. That today you are in pain, but tomorrow it will soon be your turn. I believe that the preacher or the teacher in the book of Ecclesiastes is not mentioning nothing like that. Nothing about revenge. Nothing about showing off. Nothing about telling people that God will make them pay. But rather the writer is saying to all of us who are listening today that because there is a season for everything, we must prepare ourselves for our season. Therefore, I come to say to the church of God something very simple today. Make the best of your season. Make the best of your season. I turned another year in my life just yesterday. I won't tell you the number. But I realized that the way I used to be five or nine years ago when I just came in Warsaw, and I saw me look and I saw me feel. I feel tired when I walk for five minutes, but when I came like a broomstick nine years ago in Warsaw, I could run from Warsaw to Troy and come back, me still strong. Now, if I never enjoy those nine years, they are all gone. So therefore, I come to the church to say to you, enjoy your season because the season will not last. I am telling the young girls that yes, enjoy your beauty because your beauty will not last. Uh, yes, enjoy your strength, young men and young women, because your strength will not last. The writer is saying there is a time and a season for everything because the season will change. The season has changed for our sister. Right now she is awaiting for God to call her home. The season has changed for her. Now you are awaiting for your own season. But guess what? Many of us, we are wasting time. Amen. Wasting our season thinking that we will have life. And here the writer is saying to us, when you read the psalm, he says that we are all like a flower. Today we are so beautiful. And tomorrow they will just dash you away. I've been to some funerals. They have more flowers that you can count. But by tomorrow morning when you pass the same place, they just dash them away and they dry and they burn them. Because this is the season. The season for you to be pretty and the season for you not to be so pretty. So therefore, we are calling upon God's church to pay attention to the season and make the best of it because today you are well cherished and tomorrow nobody remembers you. 
I don't want Pearl John to feel any way, but the truth of the matter is that there will be time when he will not remember his wife. That's just natural. There will be time when he cry when he's at, on the bush working because if he comes back home he will get something to eat cooked by his wife. But there are times when he will not remember until it comes to him that she is no longer there. That's life. A season for everything. A season when you will re be remembered and a season when you will be forgotten. What then you will do in your season? That's why the psalmist says, teach us, O Lord, to number our days so that we can apply our life into wisdom. Church, take the best opportunity of the season that God has blessed you with. Amen. The pastor tell me that it's a homily, so I need to make a few observations quickly and share with you some dangers about the season. Here are some dangers. Sometimes, friends, as we know that the seasons are there and we are enjoying the season, we tend to pay too much attention to somebody else's season. Let me say it again. That sometimes we pay too much attention to someone else's season. That the grass is always greener on the other side. But you know why? It is because you do not water your own grass. Your grass now look green because you do not water it and you pay attention to somebody else's wealth. You pay attention to somebody else's blessing. You pay attention to somebody else's deliverance. You pay too much attention to other people's business. Let, 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 let me, tomorrow is Sunday. Let me save that for my own people. I don't want to be disrespectful to you. But tell, let me tell you something that some of you, you pay attention too much to other people's problem while you leave your problem unattended. What are you doing to your own season that God has blessed you with? The danger is that we pay too much attention to someone else's season. And therefore you will miss out on what God has in store for you. There's another danger that we face as we encounter our own season. Some people cannot wait for their own season. Let me say this again for the church to get it. They cannot wait for their own season. Therefore, you become envious, red eye, because you cannot wait for your own season without telling you what is happening in the world. But right now, a 20-something-year-old boy is already being served for a life sentence because he could just not wait for his own season. Many young men and young women who are here today, they cannot wait for their own season and they end up in things that will just destroy their life and the life of their family. But I hear the writer says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So you pay too much attention to other people's season and you do not wait for your own season. No. I know when it is mango time and you can see the mango well ripe and pretty over the skin, but give it a bite. It's sour from the inside. Is that they call the first ripe mangoes? Too many of us, we want to reach there when God is not bringing you there as yet. Your season is not yet there. Wait for your own season. If the Bible is true, he said that there is a season and an activity for under heaven for everything. Your season will come. Your time to shine will come. And if God never wants you to shine in that way, you will probably go to the grave without shining in that way. It is God's will. You pay too much attention to other people's season. Also, you are envious about other people's season. You know, the truth is that, friends, there are some people who will be blessed before you. I think I mentioned that last week. There are people who will be blessed before you. There are people who will get rich before you. There are people that you used to feed them. They will feed you today. There are people that you used to give them somewhere to sleep. And they're not going to pay your bill. That's what God has ordered. That's their season. 
There's no need for you to be upset and have red eye over what people have because it is their season. There is a third danger about the season. Sometimes we wish that we could trade a season. <laughs> now this one is very much dangerous because you do not know what the person has done to be in that season right now because some people, they cannot sleep about you not having ambition not striving to best or to other things but I'm telling you not never wanted to trade what God is giving you now for what you see other people are having some people they have the prettiest mansion but if you ask them when last they sleep they can't tell you because they have to look over their shoulders and you and your four or seven children, you are still sleeping in a two-bedroom, but yet, when you sleep, you snore. And if you're not careful, you may wake up late tomorrow morning. So I'm challenging you today, since I'm not going to see you tomorrow morning, that you should never have no desire to trade your season to somebody else's season. No, no. Few observations more. Every athlete, they know that they have one season. And if they miss that season, they may also miss their own career. This is why that those who are smart enough, they leave the competition or the field early enough, like Usain Bolt. As much as he is fast now, he will probably be beaten by many other youngsters that is their season right now. Because his season has already ended. I am not saying he may not win a race, but in terms of the season that he had five years ago has already ended. It is somebody else's season. Help my unbelief. Let the church say, Savior. Do not pass me by, Savior. Do not pass me by, trust me on me. Would I see thy face? Broken spirit, save thee by thy grace. Sometimes when you are so accustomed to your own order of service, and that's why we don't want it to be disturbed. It is right now we realize that there is a eulogy after I preach. And my church knows that after I preach, I done, we done. Until she was sure he was on a taxi to school. 
And in the evenings, when school is dismissed, whenever I hear, good evening, Auntie Polly, I know what time of evening it is. It's the children coming from. She would always have Kisco on the fridge, and it was not for her children alone. It was for every children who was passing. She was very, very kind. Her twilight. As the light of Polly years were fading, so was her strength. After a period of illness in 2021, her health on the 16th of May, when her son Kemar and her son Perjo and her spouse Perjan went to visit her along with other family members, they were greeted with the news that she had passed peacefully on the evening of May 15. She passed leaving behind her mother, Cherry Baker, her spouse, Howard Hanson, her four children, Kemar, Shakari, Shakara, and Junior. Six brothers, Benji, Ghana, Leary, Rodney, Julian, and Gregory. Her aunt, Yuna, nieces, nephews, and other relatives and friends. Grief, I have learned, is really just love. It's all the love we have but cannot express. All that unspent love gathers up in the corner of our eyes, the lump in our throat, and the hollow part of our chest. Grief, grief is just love with no place to go. We're all experiencing grief because of the love we had for her. Let us in everything we do remember her in a happy way and honor her by being kind to each other. We do not have to be rich to be kind because she showed that to us. May we also look out for all the children in our community as she always did and may her soul find rest. Thank you. Thank you. We praise the Lord. We bless the Lord. Praise Amen. The Bible says that everything that I've read, praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. So all of us here can praise God. Yes. The only one person here cannot praise God anymore. Yes. And so the message that we all heard, what do you do with your season? She cannot do nothing anymore. But all of us here can do something about our season now that we have. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And we ought to use the season that we get now. Now you can call on him. Try to know him. Now, before time change for eternity. God give life. And he takes lights away. But I must let you know that Jesus has made a great gift for us. He said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundant life. So you can have life after death, but you can only get that through Jesus Christ. At this time, I'm going to ask the congregation to stand, all the we families. Remain seated as we ask God blessing on them. And not only on them, but on all of us. Because all of us do need Jesus. Amen? Amen. And it doesn't matter who you want to be. Jesus, that moon, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, friends. We are getting ourselves ready to move from the church to the burial ground and I'm very happy that it is just two minutes away. So we won't have to drive. So we can just walk and put, so the pallbearers will get themselves ready to put the body, the casket to the van. So if they want to walk with it or put it in the van, they will do what they have already planned, but we ask you to allow the family members as we sing the first verse of the song, allow them to exit the church as we, you know, remain in the church singing to the glory of God. Amen, church? Amen. Allow them to leave so you can greet them at the graveside. Please stand. Okay, friends, this is, this is, let me use 
Am I still online? Am I still online? Yeah, cut it. Hey, all right, see you there.
knuckle with everything.
access. Let me try to access it from here. So. Say again? I'm going to try to be. Oh, that's yeah. all right then. Okay, so you're going, going to go. Yeah, all right. Remember, some of you Let us continue to worship. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yet do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Neither hype nor hate, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of Almighty. Let us pray. God of life, we thank you for the life of your daughter. You led her to us for a few years. And here we are witnessing that, Lord, we're going to put this body to the ground. May this place be a reminder that our season is short, that, Lord, we must prepare ourselves when you will call us home. Almighty God, we lift her up into you and as she await your second coming. May angels saturate this place while she awaits. And we lift up to you again the family members. Be with them, Lord. For we pray in Jesus' name and the church of God we say. Amen. For as much as that pleased God in God's mercy to receive the body of our dear sister here departed, we therefore commit her body to the ground. Therefore we say, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. May a soul continue to rest in peace. Alright, white men, please come and help us to... While the white men are doing their part, let us continue singing. The songs printed in our audio of service. Shall we gather at the river where bright angels feet have trod with its crystal tide forever? Beautiful, beautiful river, gather with the saints of the river that flows from the throne of God. Here we'll reach the shining river, lay we every burden down, grace of spirits will and provide a robe of crown. Yes, we will gather at the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river. Yes, we will gather at the river. 
of worship, a reminder that our season is short, a reminder that we must never take life for granted. We pray for the family and we pray for friends who have journeyed from near and far to support them. Be with all of us, Lord, and help us to make decisions to follow you, not just for today, but until you come again. The people of God, we say, Amen. 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 Let us receive the benediction. May the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest, remain with us all now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Have a blessed day, I love you all.